Hello everyone and welcome back. Larry here again to talk about the bourbon stout that we brewed. If you remember back in early November, we had a live stream brew day where we were doing a dragon's milk inspired bourbon stout. And we had Chad, Clay and several other folks over here for that brew day, right? That was a blast, had a great time with you all. At least those of you who watched it. So here we are, late December, right before Christmas, uh, ready to give it a taste on camera. Now I've had this, and I have been drinking this already for a good week or more now. Uh, you know how it is, the cook's always gotta taste the uh, food while it's cooking right, the home brewer's gotta taste the beer while it's uh, aging and uh, progressing through the carbonation, right? So I, I've already been drinking this, and I was actually a little bit worried that this was gonna be all gone before I could shoot this video, which is why I'm hastily trying to get this done now. Let's see the finished beer. Here we go, huh? Look, it's a beauty. Let me see if I can get it up to you guys real nice and close there. Let it focus. Don't mind the uh, reflections of the lights off to the side. They're like eyeballs on the lens, but uh, this did turn out really well. Actually, uh, about as good as I hoped, honestly. This actually, uh, I was really surprised when I, when I took my first sip. Even when it was flat and uh, while well, I was testing the original gravity, the final gravities, I mean, uh, and, and the like, but uh, as it was carbonating, I tasted it, it was getting better and better. It tastes very similar to dragon's milk, which I happen to have a bottle of right here uh, for you to see. For those who don't know what a dragon's milk is, uh, it's, I don't know if you can read that bottle from that far away, but that's why I patterned this after. And it's pretty close to it. In fact, I'm going to pour a sample here in just a minute to uh, do a little side-by-side -side -side tasting. No blind test whatsoever. In fact, uh, this isn't an exact clone that I brewed. I actually did take some liberties with the recipe because of what I had in-house to brew with. My own home brewing knowledge that I've acquired over the years that I thought would be better for the recipe as well as, why not? Uh, just did what I wanted to. But for those who actually have the ability to go back and look at the recipe, and I put the video in the video, put the video, I put the link in the video description down below uh, for you guys to go get the, the recipe that I brewed. But for those who want to see the, the, as, the, the original source recipe, there's an issue of uh, Brew Your Own Magazine here from 2008, which features uh, the clone recipe for the New Holland Brewing Company's Dragon Milk, which is sort of there on the screen. And uh, so I use this recipe. I came up with my own based upon my own expected efficiencies. And I, uh, so I tweaked a few things. For example, uh, I substituted uh, a, a midnight wheat malt in here because I wanted less bitterness, but I wanted the uh, dark roasted flavor and color. Uh, there's other ways to achieve the effect, but that's what I use. Some people will put that, those dark roasted grains uh, late in the mash. Now on that brew day that we did, I just kind of mixed them all together the night before because I was trying to prepare for a live stream and having people over and all this and cooking food and other things we were doing. I just was doing the expedient path. But in the future, I think uh, this, this beer has got really good. Really good flavors all around. Only a hint of roasted character, which is great. I don't want to be too astringent, but that's one of the things I might do in the future to make it less so, is to put those roasted greens later on the mash. But since I was using midnight wheat, uh, it was actually not really a, a big problem. And I took some other uh, liberties here, um, some ratios and things. I'll put the recipe, I'll put both recipe links. Um, actually, I'll just put both recipes in the video description. The the original from the magazine, as well as what I did. So you can actually look at and compare to see if you want to copy mine more than theirs or theirs more than mine, or come up with your own hybrid version like I kind of did. But it's got a slight bourbon hint to it, which is what I want. I didn't want it to be too strong. I didn't want it to be too oaky. There's a little, little bit of oakiness in there, just a hint as well of that, as well as some hints of vanilla and toffee or coffee-like uh, flavors in there too, but not none of them dominate. It's really well-balanced. It's really good. Um, it's not high gravity. It's not super viscous. Well, it is high gravity. It's, I, th I think um, as far as the ABV, my calculations said it was uh, when I did my recipe, I actually came up with like, let's see, 8.5%, uh, I believe it was. Uh, alcohol by volume, I was shooting for 8.8. .8. Now the Dragon's Milk is rated at 11% if you look at the bottle. And that extra few percentage points actually come from the bourbon 
that I added. So I did some math on a piece of paper and figured out that uh, the bourbon that I added, which I think is probably about four ounces worth of bourbon to this five gallon batch, added a few percentage points, a couple percentage, well, points, not whole, whole numbers. And I think I estimated at around 9.2% ABV is a, a ca calculation based upon the beer, the alcohol volume of the beer, plus the addition of the liquor into it. Hope that makes sense to you. But I was shooting for 11%, just like Dragon's Milk. And the reason for that was, if you remember my live stream brew day, um, I used a expected or as designed extract efficiency of around 70%. I should have known better, but I haven't brewed a high gravity beer in like 15 years or more. I actually didn't uh, lower my uh, design recipe by 10 or more points because my actual extract efficiency was more like 58%, I think it was. And so therefore I got a much, much less sugar in, into the boil. I adjusted that with some dry malt extract. I did a rough of a rough order kind of quick calc uh, during the live stream showing uh, what I was doing to figure out how, how many pounds or ounces of dry malt extract to add to make up for it. I miscalculated because I was kind of uh, kind of distracted with the live stream and everything else. I actually added a pound and a half, which I thought was enough. It did raise the gravity up, not as much as I needed to. Uh, I did as a result of that whole experience that day, as frustrating as it was, I actually went back and updated my home brewing spreadsheet. For those of you who use my freely available spreadsheet out there uh, off my website, you can actually uh, now, as part of the recipe sheet, there's a section off to the side where if you were to uh, do your mash, do your pre-boil gravity measurement, find out your low or high, there's a little sidebar calc that will show up now that you can pick the sugar or water um, quantity. If you're low, it'll it'll give you a prompt for sugar. If you're high, it'll give you a prompt for water. But uh, you, then it will tell you, that it'll ask you to pick a, uh, a sugar type, a dry malt extract, corn sugar, right? Things like that. And then it will tell you exactly how much more uh, of it to add to get your pre-boil uh, specific gravity. So uh, this will never, hopefully never happen again to me or to you if you use this. And I, uh, this new version isn't out quite yet, so uh, bear with me. I need to do some more testing and some more validation of it before I uh, feel comfortable sharing it with you all so I don't screw up your brew days with incorrect math and numbers because I made a whole bunch of changes to that spreadsheet. But that's a topic for another video I hope to make soon. Going back to the beer though, really good. Uh, but the lighter um, viscosity, uh, it's not light. I mean, it's still a he sort of a heavy beer, but it's not like a Goose Island Bourbon County. If, if, if you ever had those, I had uh, samples just recently of this year's crop and a few years uh, past. That's a very thick, viscous beer at, at about 14 to 15 percent um, ABV. As, uh, so it's a much thicker, maltier, and very syrupy beer. This is more like a regular uh, stout, in, in my opinion, but with a little bit of bourbon and oak and um, and uh, and just good flavor all around. Oh, man. So I bet you're all wondering now what happened since the live stream brew day. Uh, I'd, I've been posting updates on occasion to Instagram, sometimes on YouTube as well. Uh, some, some pictures, some video clips. Actually, the stuff on the YouTube community tab, when I post videos, no one ever sees it. No one ever likes or comments it, so I assume you're not seeing it. Pictures, though, do. So I think there's some quirk with YouTube where it's not showing you the videos in your feed. I, I don't get it, but whatever. Uh, if you're on Instagram, you've probably seen all of it. And uh, what I did was ferment it normally as any other beer for my standard, for me, a couple weeks time. Uh, and usually this beer, this beer actually fermented in just a few days. It was, it was a, a pretty rapid fermentation, but I did let it sit, uh, sit and settle out uh, for the whole two weeks, partially because that's what I always do. I, I creature of habit, plus I'm in no hurry. But the fun part was while that thing was fermenting, I was preparing the bourbon. So what I used was, it, so I have it here. So what I used was this bourbon here. Um, you can use most any bourbon, really. This is just re Redemption bourbon. Uh, I'm actually more of a fan of the Redemption rye, uh, but I had it for that purpose. And I went ahead and I uh, soaked about, I think it was two ounces of whiskey barrel chips that were from a whiskey barrel. You could probably just use toasted oak chips, but I used actual uh, charred wood from a from a barrel, supposedly, that was sold in the local homebrew store. Um, either way you want to go with this, but uh, I soaked 
Uh, I put the chips in a bag, I put the bag in a little jar, added some bourbon, and I let it steep for those whole two weeks while it was fermenting, or the, while the beer was fermenting along. And when the beer was finished fermenting, I went ahead and racked it to another fermenter, whereupon I added the bag of chips along with some of the bourbon. I didn't add all the bourbon up front because it's like when you add too much salt to the food, you can't take it out. So I, this is my first time doing this. I just put just enough, a little bit in there to see, let it sit for a couple of weeks, tasted it, decided it needed a little bit more, poured the rest of the bourbon in, let it sit another week or more. And then I kegged it and here we are, prost. So the question is, would I do this recipe again? Absolutely, it is killer. Actually, I think I like it better than several other styles that are out there right now. In fact, it's probably uh, tied, uh, for, and for me, uh, up there with uh, some of the bourbon counties that were out there, even though they're a slightly different, heavier style, uh, I tend to prefer this over those. So that says a lot, right? But being a restless home brewer, would I make changes to this recipe? Of course I will. Uh, I will adjust my recipe next time to lower my expected, my expected extract efficiency to get my target right out of the gate when I, when I mash and, and, and extract into the kettle. I also will toy around with adding some of the dark grains uh, on the, towards the end of the mash rather than mix them in right from the beginning to lower some of the astringency that comes, that can come out of that. It's not much of a problem here, but just try it out and see. Oh, and one more thing I'd like to add is maybe a little bit more bourbon. Um, I was not trying to be cheap on the bourbon, but I, I didn't want to waste a half a bottle of bourbon just to soak a couple ounces of chips. So I kind of put just enough in the jar to uh, submerge the chips, and I thought that would be plenty. I think maybe next time I'm going to add probably a couple more ounces worth of bourbon uh, to the jar and pour all that in right from the start next time. But I can't complain. Great beer. Most excellent. One thing I forgot to do, I'm going to pour up a little sample of the dragon's milk for you to, to uh, at least visually compare. I'm going to try them side by side though. I'll be right back. Let's see here. Get a bottle here. There we go. Gonna grab me a little glass here. Give this a shot. <laughs> all right, so, all right, so here, here, let me put them side by side here. So, homemade dragon's milk. Homemade dragon's milk. So, let me try the dragon's milk here. Okay, that's dragon's milk. All right, I wish I had some water to rinse with, but I'll just give it a shot anyway. Very similar, guys, very similar. Um, if if I served myself or somebody served me my, my homebrew and called it dragon's milk, I, I wouldn't uh, question it. It tastes very similar, if not almost the same, uh, and vice versa. If somebody tried to pass off dragon's milk as my homebrew, I'd probably be like, oh, okay, cool. But even probably, probably wouldn't even be able to tell the difference. So, um, so there you go. Success. Haha. -ha. So once again, the video description has the links to the recipe in there. So if you want to go see what I did, want to, want to duplicate what I did, go check it out. It's all, it's all there. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section down below. I'd love to see them. I'd love to see what you think about this. And if you like this video, throw me that thumbs up button because that helps the algorithm let people know uh, other people know that they may want to see it too and share it with others. I think that's how it works. Who knows? This algorithm is always changing. Thanks for watching. I'm glad you could hang out with me for these past several minutes and uh, I will talk to you all next time.